Sophia here, my great challenge. Welcome back to Vlogtober. This is day number 28. I want to give you a quilting update. Um, this is Primitive Quilts magazine and they've issued, in the last four issues, they have a quilt that is a Pat Sloan quilt. So this is the one I'm working on right now. Again, this is the fall one. It's a seasonal mystery quilt and then it does, um, have every single season so this is the one I'm working on and when you are done with all four seasons this is what the quilt is going to look like so you can see that the one I'm working on without a glare possibly is right here so I'm still working on this I'm still working on the full version um, with my own colors and this is what it looks like so far so I finished basically the most of the top and I've started doing um, the applique. I'm learning to applique. I'm going to do this part here today. I'm gonna to show you how I'm doing that, um, but I wanna show you what I've done so far with the applique techniques. Um, this is the first time I do applique, real applique. So it's, uh, um, it's not difficult, but it does take time. And I did do some stitching here that's, um, what do you call it, chain stitch. To do the little vine right here so I'm very happy with it I like the colors that I've picked I wanted to do something a little bit more um, bright and more vintage than the colors that she picked so I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the applique and start doing the process it's going to be a short video because I don't want to spend too much time some of you don't like quilting I get it um, but I really enjoy it so I wanted to share something I enjoy with you so this is the bottom part of the quilt and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. So she has these pieces here that need to be um, added at the bottom. And what I did is that I've already used a stabilizer on them and that's because I didn't know what I was doing. So there's a stabilizer already on the back, you can see that. Um, and it's not the kind that can be re-glued so what I'm doing is that I'm using the temporary spray the basting spray to kind of temporarily glue them at the bottom here or anywhere I need them so that I can uh, go ahead and do the um, stitching the uh, um, zigzag around them and this is not a quilt I'm going to use all the time it's just gonna be kind of like a decorative quilt by the way this one I'm actually keeping for myself because usually I make quilts for others and this one I've decided to keep it so the bottom part is here and then the part that's gonna be probably taking the most time is the one that goes here and it's got those um, leaves like this to show you that real quick oops okay so all of this needs to be applique, all right? So it's gonna take a while. I'm not gonna do this yet because again, I'm just learning and uh, I'm just going by the uh, edge of my seat, so the uh, seat of my pants here, uh, learning how to do this. So what I'm gonna do is put this stuff aside and I'm going to use my spray basting and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray baste and adhere those to the bottom and then I can go ahead and start with the zigzag all around it. So I have a piece of fabric here I don't care much about and here's the um, basting spray I'm using. This is Quilt Basting Spray, Secures Quilt Batting to Top and Back, works with cotton or polyester. Um, it's basically a glue, it's a temporary glue. So I'm just spraying a little bit, just enough to secure it. so that I can go ahead and do the zigzag. I actually did finally buy some of the stabilizer that's um, the fusible interfacing, because that's not what I had for this. Um, and that one you can glue on both sides 
not just um, the one that goes to the fabric so I was using the wrong kind and I didn't want to add another layer of interfacing so I'm doing it this way for now just for this So they glued in. I don't have any glue on this. And let me get started with the zigzag. So I'm on zigzag um, on my brother. I'm keeping it the stitch length at 0 0.5 and I'm doing um, a stitch uh, width at 3.5. So let me go needle down. I'm going to do a couple of stitch in place and here we go. So I've done the whole length and now I'm going to start doing the scallop edges. And for this one, I'm just turning the fabric a little bit. And when I find that I can't turn it anymore, I just lift the foot. And what I'm trying is making sure that I grab the edges and what I'm trying to do is make sure I drop the edges of the fabric in between the two stitches, right? It's got to be in the middle of the zigzag. So the bottom part is done. Um, you guys remember when I was trying to figure out how to do applique? It's not the straightest you could possibly see, but I would say that I'm happy with it based on, let's say, uh, this was the first time I did applique. You remember when I did this? Oh man, I struggled. <laughs> and this one, I am not struggling as much. Uh, I'm just learning how to do it. and. You can see like here, for instance, I had like a little hard time, I ended up doing a crisscross because I, I couldn't figure out how to do the uh, going up and then going back down. Same thing here, I kind of didn't do too well. And then here, I think I got the hang of it, right? So uh, I still think that the zigzag itself is not tight enough. So for these here, I'm definitely going to uh, shorten the um, spacing between the stitches because it really does look like a zigzag compared to over here um, where it was more like a satin stitch and I had it really really tight together. Oops, a little thread. Okay. I hope you're in uh, focus. Um, I have to change color because I've done all of the leaves and um, 
I need a new bobbin, so I'm going to fill a new bobbin with burgundy red. I need the specs. Um, I have to tell you, I uh, I never did applique before because it was really intimidating to me. Uh, I didn't think I had the skills, um, you know, to do that. But as I'm doing this, it's not that difficult. It really isn't. Um, and I can see how I missed out on a lot of patterns while they're still around um, because I was intimidated. So I'm trying to tell you here is that it's never too late to learn, you know? If there's something you really want to learn to do, just do it. Um, take the time, have some me time, have somebody show you, but don't be intimidated and say, oh, this is too hard, this is not for me, because really nothing is too hard. You just got to apply yourself, that's it. I'm really happy with this um, and the opportunity to learn something new, I really am. Okay, so all of the uh, green has been stitched. This I've just temporarily uh, basted you know, the basting glue, and um, I'm just trying to reposition the petal so that I have a nice flower. I think that's pretty okay. All right, um, I'm doing everything in burgundy, and I'm going to start with doing the circle here. That way it will hold all of the petals in place, and then I'll just go around. I was thinking about doing this in um, cream color, but now nah, I think it look better if I do it in burgundy because that way it will um, kind of like blend in. Here we go. Here's the first panel. It's done. Um, I'm very happy with it. I am. I'm just, you know, I'm amazed at how much I have learned in the past year. Because you remember I started quilting last year around September and it was an absolute disaster. And then Scott, well it was in August, and then Scott bought me a new machine and I really got serious on learning how to quilt. And whoops, you didn't need to see that. But here we go. Here's the flower. And I did two round, two pass on the circle because I wanted more of a uh, satin uh, stitch finish. But yep, it's done. I'm loving it. I really do. I like the colors that I picked. I really like that vintage look. I have to tell you, this, these two fabrics here I think are fabulous together. And uh, which one I like too. I like this one right here. I really like this fabric. And um, I guess I like this one too. I mean, anything that has flowers, they're all beautiful. They really are. I'm loving it. So let's pick the next panel. Okay, so this is the winter one. That's uh, what it looks like. This is spring, I'm going to assume. And this one here is summer. Um, I'm going to... Hold on. These are little dots. That's going to be really difficult. Um, I need to practice some more <laughs> before I get to that. Let me see. How does she do it? Yeah, it's little dots. Can you see them? All right. So that I think I'm going to wait. I don't think I have the skills for that yet. So we need to practice. I think this one's got dots too. We're going to do this one here. Okay. So next will be this one. Um, and... I'm going to do the same colors. I'm not changing the colors. Because um, the applique in it doesn't look too complicated. So that's the one I'm going to do. Um, next time you'll see me do a video on quilting, I'll probably have all the pieces cut and we'll start making some of those panels and stuff. And same thing we're going to do. Um, so same thing. I'll just do an update here and there and show you um, where I am with the quilt but in case because I have had questions and I'll put the links below okay so if you want to do this you got to get the primitive quilts and projects these four issues you got to get winter 2018 spring 2018 summer 2018 and fall 2018 okay um, 
well, basically the entire year for 2018. And then you'll get, because each month has, um, each magazine has one panel, and then the last one has the entire quilt. So this is where I'm at. This is my quilt update. I'll say goodbye. I'm super happy and excited. And that would be it for me. So I'll say goodnight. Bye. Bye.